While we must and will win this war, we should also remember the high price that will be paid if the very foundation of modern society is destroyed. In the film, there are three important monuments men. George Clooney plays Frank Stokes, who is inspired by George Leslie's death. Matt Damon plays James Granger, who is inspired by James Rorimer. And finally, Kate Blanchett plays Claire Simon, who is inspired by Rose Valland. The movie The Monuments Men, which is based on a true story, focuses on the journey of a group of seven comprised of art historians, curators, museum directors, artists, architects, and educators who fought for the survival of tens of thousands of works of art that had been stolen by the Nazis during World War II. Without their effort, generations of culture would have been lost. The Monuments men were under mandate from President Franklin D. Roosevelt and General Dwight D. Eisenhower. The Monuments men risked their lives on the front lines and worked tirelessly to protect Europe's monuments and greatest cultural treasures from the destruction of the war by Hitler and the Nazis. Without vehicles, typewriters, or full authority, they managed to track, locate, and return more than 5 million looted cultural items. In the beginning of the movie, the audience is introduced to the different people who are a part of the Monuments Men. They are forced to train like soldiers so that they will be able to survive in the war atmosphere. There are several characters who are essential to the movie, as seen in this clip. We have been tasked to find and protect art that the Nazis have stolen. Well, the chaps are all very anxious to get started. We have your architect from Chicago, a sculptor, a director of design at the School of Fine Arts, and a few other experts in various fields of art. How are the fellows making out? Like Olympians! As the war progresses and the German border is breached, their focus shifted to locating movable works of art and other cultural items stolen or otherwise missing. During their occupation in Europe, Hitler and the Nazis pulled off the greatest theft in history, seizing and transporting more than 5 million cultural objects to the Third Reich. Their initial responsibility was to fix combat damage, primarily to structures, churches and museums, and other important monuments. The Western Allied effort, led by the Monuments Men, proceeded to go on the greatest treasure hunt in history, retrieving these stolen art pieces. In the movie, the Monuments Men saved an important painting from a coal mine and returned it to the priest of the church from which the painting was taken. The following clip will depict how the Monuments Men in the movie and in real life saved looted works of art. Although it is a good movie, it does not completely do justice to history. This can be seen as there are many large differences between the events that happened in history and the events in the movie. For example, while the movie focused on the idea of a small group of people who were named the Monuments Men, 
The actual group was made up of about 350 men and women from 13 different nations. Also, the movie only depicted the monument's men recovering and protecting works of art. They also worked with military officials to dissuade enemy bombers from destroying culturally significant pieces and places. In addition, the depiction of Hitler's Nero decree is oversimplified. It says if Hitler dies or if Germany falls, they're to destroy everything. Everything. We gotta move. In it, Hitler ordered that all military transportation, communications, industrial and food supply facilities be destroyed. The decree was issued on March 19, 1945, as an attempt to prevent Allied forces from using resources against the Reich during But it didn't explicitly include art. In the movie, however, when Stokes reads the decree aloud, he lists archives and art among the things set to be destroyed. This enables the plot to move forward so that it can seem like our heroes are racing against the Germans, who are now set to destroy the art if Hitler can't have it. In actuality, Hitler specified that his art go to German museums, which is strong evidence that he didn't want the art destroyed. Hitler was building the world's greatest museum in his childhood hometown in Austria, which aimed to preserve the art the Nazis had accumulated in order to glorify himself and the Third Reich. It would also have been highly improbable that the monuments men even knew about the decree during their mission. The systematic destruction, as seen in the film, being carried out as a result of the Nero Decree never happened. The Nazis destroyed art that they considered degenerate, such as expressionist paintings, and we know that they burned at least several thousand paintings that they thought were toxic to the German society. However, they did not destroy art that they valued. In the movie, it is shown that organizing and creating the monuments men was Frank Stokes' idea. Though George Clooney's Frank Stokes character's real-life counterpart, George Stout, was instrumental in the creation of the real Monuments Men, his influence wasn't as direct as the movie implies. Robert's commission was a presidentially appointed commission that created the Monuments Men program. George Stout was recruited as one of the unit's first members, and he was one of the first Monuments Men. Before the Monuments men actually went to go find the looted paintings, they had to go through basic training, which was something that was accurately portrayed in the film. Many of them were already reservists, but others, who had no military experience, had to go through basic training. That training often took place in England prior to entering the field. Claire Simone, as portrayed by Kate Blanchett in the movie The Monuments Men, is something of a reluctant participant in an Allied scheme to rescue stolen works of art from the Nazi villains in the closing stages of World War II. Rose Valland was a member of the French Resistance and an art historian. She was the one to tell James Granger about where the Nazis were taking the art. She was worried about who to trust and feared that the pieces would be stolen by whoever she told. Her knowledge was specifically about the locations that the looted objects were being shipped to. In reality, Rose had been risking her life daily, documenting the art taken by the Nazis for at least four years before the scene where American Army Lieutenant James Granger, played by Matt Damon, approaches her for help in 1944. It is shown that throughout the war, two Monuments men died. In the film, Donald Jeffries, played by Hugh Bonneville, bravely sacrifices himself in a failed effort to save Michelangelo's Madonna of Bruges. In real life, this did not happen. However, two monuments men did perish during the war. Ronald Balfour, who is a real-life counterpart of actor Hugh Bonneville's character Donald Jeffries, died from a shell burst while trying to move parts of a historic church's medieval altarpiece to safety. However, he did not die while protecting the Madonna. The other man who died was an American architect named Walter Hutchausen, who was shot in April 1945 near Aiken, Germany. In the movie, the fictional French character of Jean-Claude Clermont, played by Jean Dujardin, is shot and later dies. Towards the end of the movie, the Monuments men end up finding gold fillings in a mine during their search for stolen art. A lot of gold was pulled from the teeth of Holocaust victims, and some of it was found in chests or barrels filled to the brim. In the left image, the Monuments men discover Nazi gold as shown in the movie. In real life, more than 100 tons of Reichsbank gold was discovered in the salt mine at Merkers as shown in the right image. 
Real Life Monuments Men Harry Etling talks about saving art from the mines. <laughs> and Harry, would you say that the film sort of accurately portrays what you experienced? Well, well, a character, well, my character would think there that portrayed over here that uh, young uh, men and some women were active with the monuments men. His portion didn't cover the actual work that, or most of the work that I was involved in, namely uh, going into the mine, into two mines every day, uh, and uh, finding the boxes that contained uh, stolen works of art. That was my job. Uh, with information that I got from the outside. Even now, hundreds of thousands of paintings that had been stolen during World War II have not been found. For example, works of art such as Raphael's Portrait of a Young Man, Bernardo Bellotto's View of the Grand Canal in Venice, and Van Gogh's Vincent on His Way to Work are still missing. Although some pieces still may be missing, the Monuments Men made a monumental difference in saving the history and culture of the world. The movie has Hollywoodized their story, but it still gets the message across of the Monuments Men's story and is able to make their contributions to World War II known.